Thanks so much for coming on. So moments like this are so instructive because they really do divide the world into very clear sectors. You sort of know who's on whose side. And I find this interesting because the rationale has changed. So people are saying, you know, we need to fight ISIS. But that's not really the point. The point is to counterbalance Russia and Iran. And I'm wondering, is that A, our goal, B, achievable with 2,000 troops in Syria? Like, what actually is the goal? I'm losing track. Well, there are a couple of goals. It's, all, it's to fight ISIS. It's also to push back on Iran and on Russia. So what's stunning about this development is all of President Trump's foreign policy advisors and top military advisors were against this decision. And he reversed them today, suddenly, in a rash decision. Now, the reason why we should stay in the same Syria, people who think we should stay in Afghanistan, right? So some of them much, are the how same. Much but the reasons are different. The have. reasons are different. Okay. Look, Trump's top policy advisor said, we are going to stay in Syria until we have, one, rolled back Iran. That has not happened. Two, defeated ISIS. We have made major uh, progress in fighting ISIS, but we haven't fully defeated them. I was in Iraq in October. Nobody on the ground in Iraq tells me we defeated ISIS there. And ISIS is even stronger in Syria still. Moreover, all of Trump's policy advisors have said, we should stay in Syria until there's a political solution. Yes, maybe another option. So there wasn't actually ISIS in Syria when the Assad government controlled the whole country. Christians and other religious minorities, a lot of them, lived in relative peace. Now they're hunted down and murdered. Why wouldn't it just be the simplest, most elegant, best solution for everyone involved if Assad managed his entire country again? Because you're ignoring the history and the development of the revolution in Syria. The revolution in Syria... But it just happened, happened a few years It happened ago. Orga organically. It began in 2011. It happened organically, right? And so Syria was an authoritarian state before that with tons of oppression. Maybe Christians were okay there. Is there a non-authoritarian... But, but people were not... Is there, there a is there a non-authoritarian state in that region other than Israel? Uh, there are there are less authoritarian states. Oh, in that no, but region. they're all authoritarian. Much less authoritarian. They're, I mean, Jordan's an authoritarian state. Criticize the king and see what happens. So, like, it's a, that's the you rule. You cannot compare the Jordan to Syria. I'm not you attacking cannot, you can't I'm even not, compare Syria to, not, to Iraq, I'm not which has a fledgling Jordan. democracy. I'm just saying authoritarian justifies nothing. They're all authoritarians, okay? okay? But the point is that this was an organic revolution. The U.S. didn't start this revolution. It started by the Syrian people, majority of whom are Sunni Arabs. They stood up against Assad. He chose, rather than to re reconcile with them, he chose to mow them down and slaughter tens of thousands of innocent, peaceful protesters. Not, That's how the revolution sure began. Assad's, okay, but, okay, but I'm not defending Assad's character. I'm merely saying from the Good. perspective, um, why would I? Yeah. I'm not Syrian. I don't work for Assad. I'm an American, and I want to know what's best for us. And if you're worried about the chaos and the huge refugee problems caused by the civil war and by the emergence of ISIS, again, abetted by the civil war, then why wouldn't you long for the days where Christians could live unmolested in Syria under this authoritarian Assad. I don't, I'm totally missing it. What because am I missing? That's not, this is actually going to cause more refugees, okay? Northern, northeastern Syria right now is secure. The reason it's secure is because of the great work by our U.S. Special Forces working with the SDF, the local Syrian and moderate Sunni forces on the ground. They've secured it. And actually, there are less refugees coming from that area. The people can stay there how peacefully. Do the, how They're do the, not getting bombed how do the by Christians, Assad. How do the Christians and when do? we pull out, uh -huh. when we pull out, it's going to cause a massive wave of Syrian refugees again because forces are going to go in and slaughter the forces, forces that we've been working with on the ground yes okay. Assad's forces Iranian Shia militia forces and possibly even Russian forces okay and so we're responsible for that because well, so this is halfway around the world we have crises like Venezuela's collapse it's right there Mexico has probably as many murders as Syria I mean not close right so like I'm just saying there are a lot of things going on but we have a moral obligation to keep 2,000 American troops in this country around the world because why I, I I'm honest I'm confused well first of all we are there already and it's successful so why pull out we also do have some obligation to the forces on the ground it's successful who fought, way. who fought bravely alongside us moreover this is going to impact us because isis will come back and if we don't have forces on the ground to monitor isis and to continue to combat isis isis will come back isis are sworn enemies of the u.s they want to kill americans right. and when they become stronger in syria they'll strike out against america again so, by so this... your viewers should worry about their own security because uh -huh. of this decision well, there are a lot of reasons to worry about our own security. A lot. Sure. Many. 
and our mental health and our economy and our health care. So there's a lot of things to worry about. But by the standards that you've just articulated, like we're never going to leave there or Afghanistan or any place that we've been for more than eight months. So I like, wouldn't say we, we we're never going to leave there, but we have to see progress on the ground. We have to see full defeat of okay. ISIS. We see, have to see political process Last progress question, why towards a peaceful resolution in Syria, and there ought to be a democracy in why Syria. Why shouldn't who cares, about, who cares about that? The question, who what cares I care about, about I'll tell you what I care about is what's happening to the Christians there. Like, nobody cares. I don't understand. We invade Iraq. It's a huge Christian community. They all leave. Well, who are killing the Christians in Iraq? I'm not, ISIS. Look, ISIS. Of course, and, but I'm just saying, well, why don't we make it an explicit... Islamic militants it, are killing Christians I'm not, in Iraq. I'm not defending ISIS. I'm just saying, why don't we make it an explicit concern of the United States to protect the Christians? But it we is don't. an explicit concern. No, it's not, concern. actually. We it's don't an let explicit any concern of the U.S. to protect all minorities in Syria and Iraq, of which the Christian minorities are an important part of. Yeah. They don't seem that important to anyone here. But anyway, I hope they are. They're important to me. I'm glad they're important to you. David, thank they you. Are. Thank you.